Hello there! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, a lot of bad things have been said about religion, and most of it's been directed towards the Abrahamic faiths. But we shouldn't forget that these self-same faiths have inspired a lot of good things like art, and culture, and charity. Which brings me to today's topic, the Prince of Egypt. Released in 1998, The Prince of Egypt retells the classic tale of Moses that freed the slaves of Egypt and received the Ten Commandments in Abrahamic law. Voiced by an A-list cast, this was the movie DreamWorks pinned its animation hopes to, while the road to El Dorado languished in the shade. With that said, open your prayer books and sing your praises to The Prince of Egypt. In ancient Egypt, the Israelites are enslaved. But one mother dreams of better for her son, and sends him to the shores of fate, where he's picked up by the Queen of Egypt. The boy Moses is now a man, Prince of Egypt, and his brother Ramses is chosen as regent, and receives a very special gift. But this girl, Zipporah, has other plans. And with the timely intervention of our protagonist, she escapes. But when Moses follows, he discovers who he really is. But the revelation proves too much. And an Egyptian pharaoh doesn't really care for slaves. But when a slaver brutally whips an old man, Moses is having none of it. Ooh. Nasty? But shed no tear for the slave driver, gentle viewer, for his crime is complicity. Moses flees into the desert and chances on a Midian village. And this village, and its peace, is where Moses sheds all thought of royalty and lineage and lives the life of a humble shepherd. Moses is given a mission from God. And so, Moses returns to Egypt to bargain for the Hebrews' freedom. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. But for all the illusions of the Egyptian priests, they had not faith, gentle viewers. But Yahweh, God of the Hebrews, will make the Pharaoh listen with plagues. Nine plagues ravage Egypt and its citizens. Still, Pharaoh stands strong. You know what it takes to get the freedom of the Hebrews? The death of Pharaoh's own son in the tenth and final plague. Man, you don't play with Yahweh. And we get a more hopeful tune. As the Israelites leave Egypt a free people. But oh dear, Pharaoh goes back on his word and attacks. But Moses has a genuine God on his side. Which is bad news for the Pharaoh. And so our movie ends with Moses delivering ten simple rules for living. So that was Prince of Egypt. And truth be told, the first time I'd actually seen this movie was when I watched it to review it. Still, I think I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. I wouldn't say this movie was overrated. It's certainly beautiful to look at and will brighten up 90 minutes of anyone's life. And I have to give points to the filmmakers for actually humanising these characters so very much. It's not all good, however. Sure, it's a beautiful movie, and doesn't outstay its welcome, but it's bereft of parental bonus, and takes itself incredibly seriously once we move into the plague scenes. And anyone who isn't a fan of musical animated films is far out of luck here. And yet, you can't really hate this movie. The classic tale of Exodus, second book of the Abrahamic Bible has survived for over 20 centuries, and in this form, it certainly deserves to survive for at least one more. Bless you for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. Amen.